from Anshe Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Noah, Noahides Honoring Parents. We know that there's such a thing as Noahides, Gentiles who decide that they're, they're going to follow the seven laws of Noah. Seven laws of Noah actually, although it seems that it's Parsha Noah, there are a few laws that are given about murder and the like, but actually the rabbis derive the laws of Noah from Vayitzah Hashem Elohim al Adam Limor Mikol Eitzagam Achol that they derive it from the verse that's spoken to Adam. So actually the rabbis have an idea that Adam was commended with the seven laws, so-called Noah. But the seven laws are generally negative. Don't eat from the live animal. Don't blaspheme against God. Don't steal. Uh, don't. Uh, well, there was one do, and that is you should keep the laws. You should have legal structures. You should set up courts. Uh, don't kill people. Uh, don't uh, do immorality. And finally, don't worship idols. So there's seven laws, but all these laws are negative. What is the relationship of a Gentile to honoring his, his or her parents? I mean, after all, you would expect that a Gentile should honor their parents. If a Gentile didn't honor his parents or her parents, you would think it's a terrible thing. But on the other hand, where is it from? Everything has to have a source. If a Gentile was, God forbid, abusing their parents, then what would be the Jewish basis to, to complain? I mean, who says it's prohibited? It, they only have seven laws. So Rabbi Binyamin Zabori, in Sefer Mitzvah of Parsha, has a wonderful essay. I wanted to share that with everyone. And Rabbi Tabori's memory should be a blessing. Just recently passed away. He was a good, a good friend and a good role model for me at Yeshivat Haratzion. So he says, it's interesting that there's a lot of sources about Gentiles and, the, and honoring parents. So for instance, Shem and Yefet, the two good sons of, of Noah, they, what did they do? They cover the nakedness of their father. And covering the nakedness of the father seems that the limit al Rashi says that since Shame was so excited that he was going to be the first one to take the coat and cover his father's nakedness, therefore he, his children, the Jews, had the mitzvah of tzitzis on our garments to have holy garments with tzitzis. So it seems he did some kind of mitzvah. What kind of mitzvah? The Torah doesn't say that a Gentile has to honor the parents. Obviously, it's a nice thing, but where's the mitzvah? So the Medrash known as Tanah de Yahu also says that Noah was an ish tzaddik, he was a righteous man. How? He was very careful to, to support his parents, support his grandparents, all his ancestors. He was a supporter. And the most famous exemplar of honoring parents is Esau. Esau is not Jewish, technically, maybe a little bit, but basically he's not Jewish. He's the exemplar of Rome, of the Edomites. And Esau was great at honoring his parents. Rabbi Shemim Gamliel says that I'm not even as good as, my, as Esau in honoring my parents because I serve my father wearing my jeans and my, uh, you know, uh, an apron. And Esau wore his most chamudot, his most magnificent garments when he served his father. And he'd go outside, he'd wear less honorific garments. Also in the Talmud, the greatest exemplar of honoring parents, although there are many rabbis who are quoted this, one rabbi would bow down so his, his mother could step on his back to get on the bed, one allowed his mother to throw his wallet in the, the ocean to, be, to curse him, uh, but the greatest exemplar is Dama ben Mentina, that in the Gemurian Kedushin 31a, uh, he, he lived in Ashkelon and the rabbis came to him and they said, look, we want to buy some of the stones for the holy Chosh um, Mishpat and the Avnei Shoah. So he said, no, no, no. I, um, I can't wake up my father. So he gave up you know, thousands of dollars so he wouldn't wake up his father. So then a few years later, it was born in his flock a paradum, a red heifer. The rabbis came and now they're stuck. They've got to pay him millions of dollars. So he said, don't worry about it. You give me whatever you're going to give me for the, the stones, you can give me for this. And the rabbi said, wow, this is amazing. This one, he wasn't even mitzuva, he wasn't commended, and yet he did it. So we see he wasn't commended in honoring parents. 
So the one hand, he's a, he's a great exemplar of honoring parents, but on the other hand, he, the Talmud says he's not, he wasn't commanded. In fact, the Or Sameach, Rameir Simcha Dvinsk, says that a Ben Noach, a Noahide, a Gentile, is not obligated in honoring parents. There's a source in Nazir uh, 61a that seems to say the same thing. Now, as opposed to that, the Reb Shmuel ben Chafni Gon, in his commentary on Genesis, says that Kibbut Avahim, honoring parents, is one of the mitzvahs that Gentiles have to do. Never heard of it. Where does he get that from? After all, everybody, he's, if you're human, you have to honor your parents. And how do we know it's true? Because Ham, the son of Canaan, was cursed. Why was Canaan cursed? The son of Ham? Because he disrespected his father. How could you be punished? Why could you punish a Gentile for not honoring his parents if there's no mitzvah to honor your parents? Ah, comes the Malbim and says, no. It's not that there's a mitzvah to honor the parents. There's a prohibition of disrespecting your parents because if you have to honor God, we know that God is compared to, parents are compared to God. In Ten Commandments, the, the parents are on the same side with God, godly mitzvot. So therefore, you, you can't disgrace parents either. If you can't disgrace, blaspheme against God, you can't blaspheme, disgrace your parents either. And that's what the Shulchan Aruch says, that, a, that, uh, that even if someone, a Jew converts to Judaism, a uh, Gentile converts to Judaism, he still cannot disrespect his parents because, after all, uh, people will say, when he was gent- as a Gentile, he used to honor his parents. Now that he's a Jewish and he's considered a child of Abraham, he's not considered biologically connected to his, to his Gentile parents, uh, or spiritually connected to his biological parents, he still should not disrespect them. So commentators in the Shulchan Aruch say, what do you mean? Because people shouldn't say that he came from a lower level of holiness and now he came from a higher level of holiness when he was a Gentile. He was holier. Now he's less holy. What do you mean holiness? He may have been a nice guy, but what do you, why do you say holiness? Was there a holiness? Was there a mitzvah for him to honor his parents when he was a Gentile? So the Rebbe Kiv Eger, one of the famous geniuses on the comments of the Shulchan Aruch, he says, it's not that Gentiles have a mitzvah to be nice to their parents. They have a custom. They're human beings and they're, they're nice. And they tend to be nice to their parents. So when someone converts, they should not be any less than they would have been if they had been a Gentile. They would be nice to their parents like everybody else. The Yad Avram, one of the commentaries in the Shulchan Aruch, he says, no. Like the Malvim, although there's no mitzvah for a Gentile to honor his parents, he cannot disrespect his parents. And that's why a Jew who converts a, a, a convert, a Gentile converts to Judaism, has to make sure they don't disrespect the parents because that's what they had, did when they were Gentiles. They had a rule they cannot disrespect. The, uh, the Shulchan Aruch says that he should give some honor. So he says, what does it mean, some honor? What does that mean? Where does it come from? So Moshe Feinstein says that when we say that we're obligated to honor our parents, it comes from two places. One is the Ten Commandments. The commandment says, It says in Parsha Kadoshim, Leviticus 19, that Isha we should fear the parents as well. It should be in awe. We should, shouldn't be disrespectful to our parents. That's for Jews. Then there's another level for Jews and Gentiles, and that is Hakara Satov. Hakara Satov. To recognize something good. So are Gentiles obligated to recognizing if someone does them, did them a favor to be nice to them in response? Of course they are. It's like a priyaschov. It's like paying back a debt. Let's say I lend $1,000 to a Gentile. So you say, does he have to pay it back? Which one of the laws of Noah is that? No, it's just an obvious moral obligation. If, if I gave him $1,000 as a loan, he should be nice and pay it back to me. So, so too, if parents changed your diapers and they gave you food and they supported you and they helped you and they gave you all the love and all that for so many years, then you have an obligation. You have a, it's almost like a monetary obligation to pay back. And this applies at a certain level. That underlies the honoring parents for, from the Ten Commandments, but it's also a separate obligation. And aside from the Ten Commandments, aside from the godly command, there's this obligation to pay back to the parents. And a Gentile has that element. So what's the Gentile's relationship with honoring parents? Here we suggest, or Moshe finds it, it's a 
simply a matter of paying back everything from the Gentiles, from the, from the parents. So we have several approaches. One approach is that there's no obligation for Gentiles. Hard to explain. I mean, after all, the, so many exemplars of, of honoring parents who were Gentiles, and some were punished for not being honorific. Shmuel ben Chafni says, an absolute obligation. It's exactly the same as Jews. It's one of the things Gentiles have to do. The Malbim says, there's no obligation to honor. There's, an, there's a prohibition against disrespecting. And finally, it, may, it could be that it's simply a Gentile custom, that Gentiles are decent human beings, and they tend to honor their parents. And finally, it could be that it's simply a matter of paying back. When we think about honoring our parents, we have to remember that not only is it a godly command, but also it is a matter of paying back a tremendous debt, of recognizing that we have a tremendous debt toward our parents. No matter how difficult it may be as they get older, whenever it is, we owe them so much, can never pay back for the gift of life itself. This also raises an interesting question that there could be other areas of morality that are not spelled out in the, in, the, in the seven laws of Noah, but if there's something that's a basic human decency of sorts, could be that, like going to Shmuel ben Chafni, all matters of basic human decency, it applies to a Gentile. Because after all, they're made in the image of God, and of course they, they have to follow all the rules of the human decency, such as Hakar Zatov, or recognizing good things. So in addition to the seven laws of Noah, there's also common matters of decency and propriety. Thank you for joining us here. Dan Shisvar, Beth Lamed Congregation, for a discussion of the Noahide laws in relation to honoring parents. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asby.org.